Welcome back to the channel. I'm Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Moon and The Blackest Heart, both books published by Simon & Schuster's Saga Press. Today I'm here to review Neil Stevenson's new novel, Termination Shock. So, I'm a huge fan of Neil Stevenson. If you watched my top 10 writers, favorite writers video, you probably saw that. If you've seen some of my top 10 favorite novels videos, you will know, I mean, I've got every Neil Stevenson book over here. That is my Neil Stevenson shelf right there. Got all of the Neil Stevenson books. Anyway. Big fan, big fan. So what do I think of Termination Shock? Well, let's talk about the cover first. We always review the covers. Because you know I'm a big fan of graphic design and cover illustration. This is, um, you know, typical of a big, huge Neil Stevenson blockbuster where we just have just a big name up here, a big title, a background. The background is actually of a waterfall. You probably can't really make that out. Um, it's decent, you know, it's decent. It's got on the inside of it um, some maps of some of the places we'll be adventuring to. Uh, let's see here. Back here, we've got a diagram of a uh, contraption that helps cool the environment and we'll get into that because this book is an environmental this is book is the global warming you know pandemic slash global warming you know future that we all dread wrapped up into a big thriller so clearly this book is an opinion piece about global warming and the COVID pandemic by Neil Stevenson, which is fine. No, you know, I, I don't care if authors put their opinions, their political opinions in their books. That's fine with me. I'm sure that he wrote this book because he is uh, of the opinion that global warming is going to kill us all and kill us all very soon. And that's okay. Not that global warming is going to kill us all soon. That's not okay. It's okay that he wants to write a book a big, huge thriller and a novel based off of a political opinion that he has. I got no problem with that. Many people will, because that's the world we live in. Um, I enjoy reading other people's opinions on political subjects. And let's face it, global warming is a political subject. Whether you believe it's a reality or not a reality, that's up to you. I'm not here to judge, and I don't care. I can tell Neil Stevenson cares and he believes that it's going to be a reality. In fact, although we don't get an exact date of this book, it takes some place, time, some place in the future. From what I gather, 10 to 20 years from now, or someone there in there, I know the name, I know the year 2029 is mentioned when they're tracking uh when they're on google maps and they're tracking some things on google maps that have to do with traffic patterns in big cities um traffic patterns when people and we're far enough into the future here that all the cars will be driven by gps robot stuff technology and they're tracking the traffic patterns of when people actually drove cars themselves like we do now and the traffic patterns when cars are self-driving and so there was a brief, because I was waiting, when is this taking place? Is this 200 years from now? Is this five years from now? When, and then they mentioned the year 2029 in the traffic thing. So then I kind of pinpointed, okay, maybe we're talking about maybe 10 or 15 years in the future this book takes place. That's my best guess. We're never really told. By the way, that whole scene about uh, the traffic patterns and how traffic patterns are better and more efficient with GPS self-driven cars was interesting. That's the main thing about this book is all of it's interesting. All the science that Neil Stevenson brings up in this thriller is interesting. All, this, all the things that can cause global warming, all the things that can melt the polar ice caps, all of the 
contributions from different countries that make things go to shit really quickly in a global warming area. And COVID, I will tell you, COVID is mentioned in this book in a lot of places. Apparently, 20, 10 to 20 years from now, we're still going to be dealing with fucking COVID. COVID-19, COVID-24, COVID-27. We're still going to be in this fucking worldwide panic over this bullshit disease. And if that's a reality, fucking kill me now. I'd rather deal with global warming than this whole fucking COVID but anyway, apparently, according to Neil Stevenson, we'll be dealing with both. Oh my God, this paints a very bleak picture of our future people. And um, so anyway, global warming, global warms everything. The book starts out where the queen of the Netherlands, a woman named Saskia, is piloting her own plane over Texas and has to make a crash landing in a field of pigs. Now, Texas at this time, all year round, the, the global warming has made the earth so hot that the average temperature in Texas year round is 114 degrees, which means it probably gets down to 100 degrees on a cool day and about 130 on a warm day. So we're talking about Saudi Arabia type temperatures in Texas now. Not only that, but, um, the polar ice caps haven't quite all melted yet because there are no, as far as I could tell, there were no, like Venice still wasn't underwater. People were still living there. Coastal regions were still pretty much safe. But there were different fluctuations just in weather patterns and this and how lakes, they, you know, and one of the things that they did with the Google Maps is they showed every year they would do a Google Map of a different lake and they would watch how the lake would dry out and then get halfway full, then dry out and then get halfway full over the years. And that was kind of fascinating to watch or read about. Um, the characters, honestly, the characters were just kind of drab. I'm just like, okay, the characters are more of a vehicle for us to follow along with as we learn about all of the dangers of global warming and all of the possible fixes, which was I was absolutely massively fascinated with these possible fixes that we could maybe create machines a la this thing in here in the back which will actually re um calibrate our globe into a sustainable cool i mean we create cool air for the globe we put things back on balance. We get rid of the toxic chemicals. We put good air that's cold up in the atmosphere, up into the um, whoosh of the, the stream, the air stream. I don't know what it's called. You'll have to read that. I don't want to get into the particulars of this machinery that shoots things into the air and sort of explodey things that... Anyway, I don't want to get into it any more than that on how, because that's the fun of reading the book, is how humanity comes up with all these myriad of ideas on how we can fix global warming and get the um, temperature of the earth cooler again. And they actually come up with some pretty fucking cool ideas in this book. And that is the point of the book. This is not a, a thriller like James Bond where the, or Jason Bourne, where there's a lot of action. It's it's more of a global pandemic, post-apocalyptic thriller where people sit around and discuss science. Which was interesting because I was really interested in the science they were discussing. Now, if you want to read like a big smash up, bang em up, space opera e laser shooting, machine gun, explosions, thriller. There's 0% of that in this book. Zero. This is all sit down around boardroom tables or fly around the world to different areas and figure out how to stop global warming. That's what this book is. How dare you? I give this book, although I, I'm going to be honest though, that being said, as much as I enjoyed that, I think I liked every single thing else that uh, Neil Stevenson has written more than this, even though this was pretty damn good. I mean, I've got, like you said, I'm a huge Neil Stevenson fan. And while I enjoyed reading about the possible fixes for global warming and his ideas and a lot of his political philosophies and the political philosophies of a lot of the characters in here, although I enjoyed that stuff quite a bit, I 
just like everything else that he's written better than this. So I'm going to give this one a 7.5, and that's a, still a pretty damn good rating for um, a book, in my opinion. You know, 7.5 out of 10. That's in the, that's like 75% good, right? And actually, I'll give it 8 point. It's 80% good. Let's give it an 8.5. Because everything else that Neil Stephen has written is 9s and 10s. 9s and Tens. This guy's amazing. And this is an amazing book in its own right. I just wanted more with my scientific explanations. Because Tom Clancy gives us a lot of scientific explanations of a lot of different things. But he also includes an occasional stick of dynamite going off. Or an occasional, um, you know, chase through, you know, London or something. Anyway, Neil Stevenson... Termination shock.